Now, if you've ever been cut off or nearly taken out while on the roads and thought we have the worst drivers in the world, well, you're not wrong. A study by Compare the Market Australia has considered World Bank data of the number of accidents that occurred per 100,000 people in 20 countries. And guess what? South Africa has the highest number of fatal accidents, just under 45 per 100,000 people. It's uh, um, seven times the number of lethal accidents in the UK, which the study says has the safest drivers. Let's uh, get some reaction now on this by uh, from rather Alta's Andrea van Heerden. Andrea, thank you very much for your time here uh, on ENCA. Are you surprised at all at these findings? Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having us this afternoon. And unfortunately, I wish I could say that I'm surprised, but no, there's no surprise there. Absolutely none. Mm. Uh, well, you know, looking at uh, the comparison, you know, I don't want uh, government to come back and say that uh, it was an unfair comparison. I just want to talk about the UK in particular, mm -hmm. because I have friends in the UK who, for instance, uh, applaud the country for its safe public transport uh, and how, uh, you know, even um, traffic, for instance, has subsided quite a lot in, 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 in um, countries such as the UK because of the public transport that is efficient. And over here, we know that that's a different story. So in terms of how they compared us to countries such as that that have more efficient public transport, uh, is it fair? Can we still say that we have the worst drivers? Well, you see, Maseko, I think uh, the problem that we need to look out and uh, look at is road safety in general. Mm. So it's no surprise there that South Africans, South Africa's roads are not safe. And yes, we can compare to other countries, but at the end of the day, South Africa is a unique climate with the, with unique challenges. But if you just look at what the the minister, the statistics the minister released with regards to the Easter holidays, mm. um, it is just astronomical. I mean, I think there was a 40% increase of fatal fatalities compared to last year during the Easter period. So whether or not we compared with international um, com or international countries such as the UK, the reality remains that everybody can see and feel that road safety is an absolute an issue in the South African context as well. So yes, it's a good indicator to see what is out there and what is international best standards. And uh, just FYI, South Africa is actually a signatory to the United Nations Decade of Road Safety. And the goal of this um, UN um, charter, if I can put it that way, is to decrease road fatalities by 50% by 2030. So South, South Africa has also made an uh, undertaking or, or signed this document to embark on this journey. Yet we are sitting in 2023 and we really can't see that any big difference has been made to date. Uh, in actual fact, as I said earlier, we've seen a 40 percent increase um, in the number of fatal uh, car crashes during the Easter period this year compared to last year. Mm. And I think another concern for me, uh, Andrea, without saying that, of course, uh, the other bigger cost is the cost to life, uh, you know, that these accidents yes. cause. But I, I imagine that also um, another part is the cost to the economy um, as we continue to have these kind of uh, fatal accidents on our roads. Yes, absolutely. If you just look at what, what it costs the road accident fund. Now, remember, the road accident fund is an entity that's specifically set up to assist people who were, who were um, part of fatal crashes or got seriously injured. And I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, the last financial year, it cost the South African taxpayer to fund the road accident fund almost 45 billion, uh, 45 billion rand per year. And not just that, we just look at transport in itself. Transport contributes 6.5% to South Africa's GDP. So it's, an, it's really a big issue, which in our opinion, Arthur's opinion, has fallen by the wayside and is not getting the attention it deserves from government. I mean, there's a lot of interventions that government can do, but again, we're not seeing these interventions. And it's not just lives that are being lost or cost, like you said, to human lives, but also to the economy, which is so important at, at this current stage of where we are in, in our country.
Mm. Lastly, Andrea, what I found interesting, which is something I think we always find out from the transport department when they release either the festive season statistics or the Easter long weekend statistics, is that uh, male drivers continue to uh, be double or cause double the amount of fatal accidents that we see on our roads. Is this because there are more uh, male drivers in general in South Africa? Yes, that is one part. So there are more male, male drivers in South Africa, but that's not the issue, Masekhu. The issue is the enforcement of law. So compliance and enforcement is a big issue. So ANSA has been vocal for many years with regards to the R2 Act, the Administrative Adjudication of Road Tra Traffic Offences Act, which government's trying to push through. But we are saying our R2 is not the silver bullet. It's, it has not been effective in Gauteng. And it's definitely not going to be effective in the rest of the country if uh, government succeeds with the constitutional challenge. But what we are saying is we need proper enforcement. So if you have proper compliance with, with the road rules by drivers themselves, that means educating them. I mean, include it in the curriculum uh, when they are in school so they know this is what is expected when I do uh, become the right age to get a driver's license, number one, and then number two, to enforce compliance. And the only way you'll be able to do that is that if you have more visible policing, and of course, then eliminate the whole element of corruption, which is unfortunately also reality. So yes, it is fair enough to say that we do have more male drivers on our roads, but the issue is compliance, not necessarily which sex drives on the road, but um, how these laws are being enforced at the mm. end of the day and i'm going to conclude with that is at the end of the day south africa has great traffic reg uh, legislation and policies but the problem is it's not enforceable and if you can't enforce legislation it becomes ineffective mm. and i mean I, I think it's also about uh, the attitude that we have as motorists on, uh, when we're on the road because this of course is not only a police issue it's also societal uh, thank you so much for speaking to us that is Alta's andrea van heerden speaking to us there about the fact that south africa has been you know discussed in australia as one of the worst places to be a motorist in